take this opportunity to first of all welcome our church family. I want to thank of all of our Facebook and YouTube audiences that will be chiming in to partake in this great worship experience. We also want to take this opportunity to offer our heartfelt condolences to the families and friends that have lost loved ones. We pray God's richest blessings and comfort and strength be upon you. Let us, if you would, go before God's rich throne of grace. Our Father, which art in heaven, we come now in the matchless name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. I'm on assignment, Father, and I thank you for sending me. Now, Lord, allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of mine heart to be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Give your people ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father, allow miracles to happen in this viewing and listening audience. Let healing and deliverance come forth and bless as only you can do in the matchless name of Jesus we do pray and everybody said amen amen, amen, amen and amen. amen come on let's give the Lord a hand of praise if you don't mind oh what a beautiful day and time it is even though we are going through and enduring a trying season in most of our lives we know that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And we are going to continue to lean and depend upon the God of our salvation, allowing the Holy Ghost to lead us and thanking Jesus for his saving power. Yes, yes. Today we want to look into the word of God and we have chosen uh, from the Acts of the Apostles, the 12th chapter, and verse number five, and we want to speak to you from the theme, the power of a praying church, the power of a praying family, the power of a praying man or woman, boy or girl, the power of a praying team, a corporate power, a praying team of men and women and believers in God. I want to talk to you today about this magnificent power that God has made available for us and this great weapon that we as Christian believers possess. We all know that we all have needs. And because of us having needs, God has given us an avenue to use to come to him. He said, uh, come to me just as you are. Whether you're weary, whether you're worn, whether you're sad, whether you're happy or glad, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, during this uh, pandemic, we have to exercise the gift that we possess. And that's the gift of prayer, of communing with God, of talking to God. Somebody asked me, what is prayer? And as I was thinking about it, I said, it is an exchange between you and your father. Not you doing all the talking, but as you petition, as you intercede, or however the method that you choose or the purpose that you have, that you present it before God. And as you present it, take time to listen because God is answering. Amen. Oh, yes, God is a prayer answering Amen. God. If you know it, just wave your hand and say, Lord, I, I know you're a prayer answering God. Because I've tried you before, yes, yes. and you have never left me. You, you have always been with me. Yes. Oh, yes, you will. He'll answer it. Oh, yes. yeah, try him. I dare you to try him. Mm -hmm. And when you ask God, ask God 
having faith. Uh, James said in his book, Epistle, that many of us ask, but we ask amiss. In other words, we are asking, but we don't believe that God is hearing and that God will answer because most times we think that we are not worthy. But I come to tell you today that the God that we serve, that sits high and looks low, made us worthy through the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus is forever seated now at the right hand of our Father, making intercessions for you and I. He is the high priest now, and he hears every cry. Yes. He hears every plea. Yes. And, and I don't want you to be hesitant to talk to the God of our salvation. A lot of times, you know, we, we just say, well, I, I, I don't think that I deserve this. Well, we really don't. But when we accepted Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as our Lord and Savior, and we have the authority to come to the Father in his name, mm -hmm. that gives us the right and the privilege mm -hmm. to ask God. Mm -hmm. And when we talk to God, let us use the word of God. I, I found out a long time ago that when you pray in the word, when you talk to God through the word, God's promises are yea and amen. Yeah. God will answer your prayer. Yeah. Now, when we look into our text today, the Acts of the Apostles, I call it most time the Acts of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost was moving. He was speaking, he was, he was helping us now navigate through these trying times. And that same power that was then, that power is now. Amen. Oh yes, all you gotta do is reach out and touch mm -hmm. and have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Yes, now as I set this text up, I want you to look at it and look at it clearly because in the Acts of the Apostles, we know now that the church has been birthed in power. Oh no, it's not a weak church. Amen. It is a powerful church. Yes, yes. And the Apostle Peter is one of the front runners because if you remember when God went through the power of Jesus Christ, he was called, he had his name changed, amen, and he now is a rock. He's the Petros. He is the big rock. He is the leader, a teacher, the pastor of God's people, and he's leading them from the old into the new. Now that the church is formulated, the church is in houses. No, the church does not have magnificent cathedrals. No, the church is not mega churches. Mm -hmm. They are holding services in the house, like we are today. Are we supposed to be doing? We are supposed to, yet, even though the church building is shut down, the church is not shut down. Right. We could be having our worship services in our home, yeah. and I tell you, men, every man who's the head of his house should be the priest. Right. If you don't know how to pray, then allow your wife to pray. Yeah. Allow the children to pray. Uh -huh. But prayer must be made in a constant and consistent matter amen. if you are a believer. Yeah. Somebody say amen, amen. in here. Somebody amen. say amen. amen. Now, now, amen. now, in this time in the 12th chapter, a few years have progressed. And here are the, the, the church. They are being, uh, amen, put on watch because of their preaching and their teaching. Uh, they are being tried. Now, they are even making martyrs. As a matter of fact, the first martyr, uh, martyr of the church is James, mm -hmm. a man, mm -hmm. one of the sons of Zebedee. You remember James and John, amen, and Peter, when they had the boat load of fish? Well, that same John, now Herod, has decapitated him, mm. has cut his head off. Oh 
and Herod sees that it has pleased the Jews because now, even though they were together at one time, the Jews and the Messianic Christians, those who believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, has divided. They are at odds. And how many of you know when the enemy see the believers at odd, they step in, just like in the local church. Whenever the church gets divided amongst the leadership and the members, Satan steps in. Just like in your household, when division comes in between the husband and the wife, Satan is the perpetrator. He steps in. And so it was, amen, in this season and in this time, Herod and the Herods for three generations have been the enemy of the body of Christ. Yes, the old man Herod in the beginning killed all the Jewish babies upon the birth of Jesus Christ. Yes. He killed all the male boys. Uh -huh. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Later on, his son, Agrippa I, amen, tried Jesus. Yes. Are you praying with oh, me? Yes, yes. And later on down the line, amen, a group of two, amen, tried the Apostle Paul. Uh -huh. Amen. These Herods, amen, were evil men. They were three generations uh -huh. of evil men that perpetrated against the kingdom of God. Yes. Do you see what's happening today? Yes. The enemy has not lost his grip. Yes. He's still fighting. Yes. But our prayer, the effectual prayer yes. of the right Righteous man, mm -hmm. yet availeth much. Yes. Now, I, I want you to see the sitting now. We, we have enemies, and, and they are rejoicing because they have decapitated James. Mm -hmm. Now they go out, amen, during the Passover season, mm -hmm. and they arrest Peter. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all know Peter they, they, they didn't come in easy because we got some Peters in our society right. who will fight to the end. Yes. They brought Peter in, mm -hmm. and now they have him in lockdown. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. They, they have him in lockdown so bad that they have four quaternions of soldiers. Mm -hmm. Amen. That are standing guard over him. Peter must be a bad man that he would warrant all of this. Mm -hmm. They have him locked down in jail, amen, and, and Peter, even in jail, is trusting God. See, when you know the Lord for yourself, mm -hmm. when you know him in the pardon of your sins, regardless of whatever you might be going through in life, mm -hmm. when friends forsake you, when family forsake you, when everybody forsake you, the Lord will take you and keep you up. Yeah. Now, in this fifth chapter, I want you to see what is happening here. In the 12th chapter, I'm sorry, and the fifth verse, it reads, Peter therefore was kept in prison. He's locked down. Mm -hmm. Sixteen soldiers got him in bondage. But look what the church does. Mm. But prayer was made without ceasing. They the ceasing. They didn't quit. The church was interceding on behalf of their leader, their pastor, their teacher. They were interceding. They were they, they were praying. They were lifted up because they had seen the destruction that was being wrought upon the church. Mm -hmm. They were looking at the destruction, at the, the murdering and the martyr, amen, that James had become. And now they are a little fearful because they see that their leader has been in prison mm -hmm. and now waiting, amen, to be slain, to become the next martyr. Yeah. So the church began to pray. How many of you have a need today? Yeah. I, I mean a real need. Oh, yes. Every now and then you got to get ugly for God. Yeah, yeah. Every now and then you got to get on your face before God. Mm -hmm. Every now and then you need to cry out. I heard David say this poor man cried yeah, yeah. and the Lord heard his cry. Yeah. I want you to know that God is not deaf. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Amen. His arms are not short. Yes. God is able yes. to meet you at your yes. point of need. Yes. Whatever you might be going through, you done tried everything else. Yes. I want you to try Jesus this morning. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. It said the church prayed. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they, without ceasing, uh, uh, ceasing, and they prayed unto God for him. They were interceding. Mm -hmm. They were crying to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. On behalf of their leader. As, as they prayed, they kept, who are they praying to? Well, Isaiah 57 and 15 gives you a little format. Look what it says here. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. He says, I dwell in the high and the holy place, and with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Every now and then you got to get broken before God. Why am I there? To revive the spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. That's what God wants to do. God is sitting on the throne, not literally, but God is on his throne of habitation. Isaiah 57 and 15. He's there waiting. He's there to perform the work for you. Church, believers, audience, you got to have faith that God heals. I know a lot of us now, we're, we're, we're kind of reticent about what's going on, amen, with the coronavirus and the COVID-19. But I come to tell you, God got it under control. Amen. Unlike 45, he said he got it. It was under control. They gonna go. It won't go away until God says it's going to go away. And I guarantee you, when you put your trust in the Lord, you will see great things began to happen. Just look at the one you're seated next to and tell them the power of prayer power will prayer. manifest Amen. in your life. As a matter of fact, it's going to happen right now. Make your petition known to God because God is the God of our salvation. He sits high and he looks low. I, I think it is in Luke 18, amen, and one, uh, the parable was spoken and it said, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Regardless whether you on the mountaintop, whether you are in the valley, whether you are just hardly making it, mm -hmm. when you become a believer, you must have a prayer life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a beggar, but I tell you what, I'm not too proud to beg. Mm -hmm. If I have to fall down on my knees yes, and yes. get on my face, I, I, I don't mind crying out to the God of my salvation. Yes. No, one thing I can't have on this Christian journey, amen, is pride. Mm -hmm. I have to humble myself. Mm -hmm. I have to be broken mm -hmm. enough to come before God. Mm -hmm. I can't come before God with an arrogant heart, mm -hmm. uh, with, with, with a spirit that's lofty. Mm -hmm. I'm higher than God. Mm -hmm. I have to humble myself yes. under the mighty hand of God mm -hmm. and allow God to work on me. Yes. Yes, uh, during this time uh, at the church was praying, they were praying without ceasing. Yes. And I remember when, when I was sick and at the point of death, mm -hmm. all of us have had these kind of trying experiences mm -hmm. where we can't see humanly our way out. Yes. But when you've talked 
the people around you how to pray and what to pray about. Amen. They become helpers of you. One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put 10,000 to flight. And the numbers keep escalating because of the word of God and the way God does things. Amen. We just can't figure our reasoning. But I come to tell you, when you take it to the Lord in prayer, but the humble and a contrite spirit and a broken heart, and you come with expectation, God will move. As a matter of fact, I feel God healing somebody right now. Amen. I, I feel somebody being healed with cancer in their body right now. Cancer, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of the crucified Savior. You have no right. I break that spirit now in Jesus' name. Glory to his name. Glory to his wonderful name. Yes, sir. Uh, the word of God say that men ought always to pray. When God answer your prayer, amen. Don't, don't, don't get so to where you don't feel like you need God no more. Amen. You, you need God every day. I've learned one thing in my household that, amen, when I wake up in the morning, amen, my wife and I spend time before God. We look into the eyes of God. Amen. Through the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. And we don't go begging all the time. Sometimes you just got to thank God yes. for how gracious yes. and how merciful mm -hmm. he has been to us. Yes. And how merciful he is to us. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, just hunt your name and tell him God got me covered. God will supply my every need. God will give me peace in the midst of my storm. And this takes me to the point now to, amen, this is where, amen, Peter is. Peter is in jail. Look at him. He's locked down. Sixteen soldiers have him. He's about to be slain in the morning. And guess what Peter is doing if you're traveling with me in the word of God, amen, in the sixth verse, amen, it says that Peter is sleeping. How in the world can you sleep and you know, amen, that you're going to be slain at sunrise? Amen. What I can say is, is that he must have had the blessed assurance mm -hmm. of knowing yes, that God was with him. Yes, yes. Because one thing I know about the word of God, God said, I'm with you. I'll never leave you mm -hmm. nor forsake you. Yes. And that's the same mentality that we must have in the midst of everything that we're going through. Yes. I want to encourage you. Amen. People, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, baptized believers, pastors, amen, that God is with us. Yes. Yes. I love I love to see God work. Mm. I love to see God move mountains. Mm. Yes, Peter is asleep, but God dispatches Hallelujah. the angel from heaven. Mm. Look at your neighbor and say, I have an angel too. An angel. Look at Psalm 34 and 7. It'll tell you, you have an angel. When you became a believer uh -huh. in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. God assigned mm -hmm. an angel to protect you. Yes. And as I often teach, you know, Elder Grove, I often teach our angel that was assigned to us mm -hmm. is the most underwork being in our lives. Mm -hmm. We never send our angel before us to clear the way for us. We never tell our angel to get our blessing from the south, from the north, from the east, from the west. We never say, come on here, put your angel to work because your angel is there assigned to assist you. Oh, help me in here. I wish I had me somebody. Amen. So, so here it is. Here it is now. P Peter is lying there, but the angel comes in in the midst, lying between two soldiers. Mm -hmm. The angel comes in and hit Peter. L let me read it for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sixth verse. And when Herod 
would have brought him forth. The same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door mm. kept the prison. Verse 7, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smoked Peter. He hit him on the side. He said, Peter, get up. And I want to say to the viewing audience today, I know that we have been trapped, we've been locked down, we've been shut in, but all of that happened for a reason because God now is releasing the angelic force and the angels are touching us yeah. and telling us, wake up! Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I've been asleep too long. I've been sleep through adversity. Mm. I've been sleep in fear and mm. apprehension mm. and paranoia. Mm. I have allowed these spirits to control me, envy and anger mm. and, and, and deprivation. But wake up! The angel of the Lord is telling us, and he sent this message through his prophet, through his pastor, through his evangelist, and I'm sounding the clarion call. Wake up! Get up! Get up! Get up from there. Get up out of that slumber. Get up out of that doubt. Get up out of that fear. Get up out of that deprivation and see the salvation of the Lord. Invite God to come on in this tabernacle. Yes. This time for a praise right yes. here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen to the instructions of the angel. Everyone that's a member of a church, your pastor is your angel. He is the human force and voice that God uses to inform you. The angel came, and the angel, the church is making prayer. Tell your neighbor, amen, the prayer is being answered. God has dispatched the angel just like in your prayer. Amen. God has heard your cry. The angelic forces have been released mm -hmm. to ascertain your blessing, mm -hmm. to bring forth your healing, yeah. to bring forth your miracle. Yeah. And he's instructing. He say, wake up out of your slumber. Mm -hmm. Get up from there. Put your shoes on. In other words, this is symbolic of coming out of slave, a slave mentality to what's been holding you. Some of us have been allowing these instances and these imps and these things that has been assigned to us by Satan to control us. The doubt of healing. The doubt of God working the miracle. Oh, yes. He's yet that miracle worker. He, he tells me, put your sandals on. Put your garment on. Cast your garment on of faith around you. Put on your helmet of salvation. Let's get ourselves, amen, with the preparation of gospel shod on our feet. Let's get ready because we are ready to move toward what God is calling us to. Yes, people have predicted that, that the pandemic will last 18 months, two years. Mm -hmm. Amen. What you going to do? Stay in bondage? What you going to do? Stay in lockdown? Come on here, brothers and sisters. We got to wake up. We got to start praying. We got to start petitioning. Like I said before, the healing is already in the land. When the church wake up, when the body of believers wake up, when the families wake up, and we start petitioning God, God loose the miracle that will bring healing to this land. I have humbled myself. I am seeking your faith. You told me to turn from my evil ways, yeah, and yeah. God, I've done the best I can. Now, God, I need you. I'm praying. I'm praying, God, meet me at my point of need. Yeah. I want you to see the angel addresses him, and, 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 and now Peter is in a maze. Can you imagine an angel coming to your house, wherever you at, whether you in Spain, you in Germany, you in Turkey, you in New York City, you in Miami, uh, amen, you are in Georgia somewhere, you in Liberty County, McInnes County, Glenn County, Charlton County, Camden, you are in Atlanta, wherever you might be, amen, amen, God has your angel already stationed there. Now look what happens. 
Amen. Peter gets up. Mm -hmm. He like in a slumber. He gets up and he began to follow the angel. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, you got to learn how to follow your leader now. Follow your you got to learn how to follow your leader. Mm -hmm. If your husband is a good leader, you got to learn how to follow your husband. Talk to me, children. You got to learn how to follow your parents. You got to learn how to respect your parents mm -hmm. because your parents hadn't got that old being foolish. Right. You got to learn how to stand. Mm -hmm. You got to learn to realize that God is still the prayer answering God. Yes. And when we assemble together and when we pray mm -hmm. with one accord, yes. things begin to happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I had mm -hmm. me somebody. Mm -hmm. The church was praying. Mm -hmm. Help me. And, and, and Peter is walking. He go through one gate. Mm -hmm. He go through two gates. Mm -hmm. He gets to the third gate. And I wonder why there were three gates. But it was a completion. He's been totally released. Mm -hmm. Hunt your neighbor and tell him, that thing I've been going through. Been going through. The pandemic wasn't a problem. Ah, the problem was in me. Ah. Yo, come on, help me here. The pandemic can move, but if you have not been released or delivered from your issues, you're going to have the same problem that you always had. And I don't want to go through all of this, amen, and come out and still be in bondage in hell. Can I preach like I need to? Tell your neighbor, I, I, I have put this on the pandemic long enough. The issue was inside of me. Now I got to follow God. Look at him walking. He's walking. He gets to the third gate. And when he recognizes everything, tell your neighbor, you got to recognize your blessing. You got to recognize your deliverance. Some of you been healed and don't even realize you've been healed. Some of you been blessed and don't even realize you've been blessed. I come to tell you today that God is yet in the blessing business. Yes, yes. God is still uh, in the miracle working yes, business. Uh, Satan has devised a mean of distraction uh, to take your eyes uh, off of what's really happening. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peter's outside. He begins to walk. Where does he go to? He goes back, amen, to the room, amen, where the Holy Spirit came in. Yes. He goes back to the room where they had the Lord's Supper at. Y'all going to talk to me in here. He goes back to the place, amen, where they are having prayer meeting. Amen. He goes there, and upon him reaching there, they have guards around the place. Help me, Holy Ghost. But, but when he comes, he knocks on the door. And the Lord told me to tell you, behold, he stands yes, at the door of your heart. Uh -huh. And God is knocking. God saying, let me in. Some of us mm. are too stout hearted mm. to allow God to come in. Mm. Some of us know that we need to be saved. Uh -huh. But we realize we want to put it on the people. About mm. the people ain't right. On, the church isn't right. Mm -hmm. This isn't right. Mm -hmm. Will you go to hell ah. because people ah. are not right? Not I come to tell you today. Mm -hmm. I'm praying mm -hmm. that God will move that demonic spirit mm -hmm. away. Uh -huh. And your eyes will be open. Uh -huh. The scales will fall off. And you can see God for yourself. Yeah. They have church too long. Yeah. They, they preach too long. Uh -huh. They sing too much. Uh -huh. They do this too much. Uh -huh. Come on people of God, wake up. Your miracle is wrapped up in your faith. And without hearing, you will not have faith. Faith comes by what? Hearing. That's why the enemy want to keep you away from the word of God. The enemy wants to separate you. Amen. Amen. But I come to tell you, when you learn how to pray, and see, you don't learn how to pray until you get some word in you. See, the word will convict you and bring you closer yes. to God. How many of you got a prayer life today? Yes, How many? Thank See, when you have a prayer life, mm -hmm. you have great expectation. Mm -hmm. I want to show you a caveat in this church. The church has been praying. Mm -hmm. The answer is at the door. Mm -hmm. But look what it says in the 13th verse of that said chapter. Mm -hmm. The answer is knocking. Just like many of you, your answer is already here. It's already here. It says, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, uh -huh. a damsel, which is a young lady, came 
to hearken, to hear an answer, mm -hmm. named Rhoda. Now, now, Rhoda can be trans translated as Rose. Rose came to the door. Mm -hmm. Now, Rose has done heard Peter preach many times. Mm -hmm. A person ought to know their shepherd's voice. She came, she heard. But she was so excited. Look what it says in the 14th verse. And when she knew Peter's voice, so you got to know the voice. My people, they know me. They know my voice. You got to, another, they will not hear. You got to know the voice of God. When God is speaking through the power of the Holy Ghost, I want you to tune in and look at me closely now. When God is speaking to you directly through the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, that is where your blessing lies. Here, don't block it out. Listen. Peter's there at the door. She knew his voice. She opened not the gate. She got excited. Like a lot of us, we get excited when the word of God or when the presence of God, when the answer is coming, we get so excited that we miss it all. It's all right to shout. It's all right to praise God. It's all right to run around. But it comes a time when you got to stand still and observe what's going on around you. I stood still the other evening. And I watched the majesty of God, the beauty of the sky, beautifully blue. I watched the birds flying. I noticed the flowers blooming. And one thing I knew, that God is still in control. He's showing you things that you have not slowed down long enough to examine. I saw the grandchildren running around and playing in freedom. I saw the wife doing what she loves to do in a flower garden. I saw my daughter trying to cook a good meal. <laughs> I saw the beauty. I saw my son cutting the grass. These are things we have blessings among us, but we never take time. And we have prayed that these things would be like this. But when they come, we got to acknowledge that God is answering our prayer. God say, I won't let you go hungry. I'll take care of you. I'll supply your every need. And if we would be honest, God has been, is still, and yet will be good to us. She got excited. She went running back to tell the church. And when she got to the church folk, the church folk say, all this praying they've been doing, they said, you must be crazy. Ain't no way. And that's what a lot of us are saying today. Ain't no way God can bless me. Ain't no way God can, can muzzle this pandemic. It's no way that God can protect me. No, I'm not telling you to be careless or foolish. Be cautious. But understand one thing. I'm going to walk with God regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstance. I'm going to pray because when we come together, we can move heaven. Heaven will move for us. Yes. 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 When they got there, uh, Peter looked down and said, well... You ain't got to let me in. I just want to let you know uh -huh. that the God that we serve yes, is a prayer answering yes, God. Yes, and I come to tell yes, you yes, today yes, yes. to the listening audience, to the viewing audience, mm -hmm. I come to let you know yes. never lose faith, yes. never lose hope. Mm -hmm. Always look to God yes. because God, yes, when you yes. petition him yes, through intercessory, through corporate, mm -hmm. however you pray to him, mm -hmm. God will hear. Yes. 
And God is faithful yes. and just yes. to hear and answer yes. your prayer. Yes. Just like he did then, mm -hmm. he's always on time. Yes, he he's never late. Yes, he's a God that has never lost a case. Yes, he's a God that will be with you through mm -hmm. sickness, through mm -hmm. sadness, mm -hmm. through brokenheartedness, yes. even through the most dire situation. Yes. God is with you. Oh, yes. Trust in the Lord yes. with all your heart. Yes, and God. lean not to your own understanding, Hallelujah. but in all thy ways, yes. acknowledge the Lord, yes. and the Lord yes. will yes. direct yes. your path. Yes. You got to talk to yes. God. Yes. You got to tell God yes. just what it's like, yes. what you're going through, yes. what you've been through, yes. how this thing. God, I've been going through so long, yes. I can't see my way yes. out. Yes. But God will open up oh, your eyes, yes. and God will allow yes. you to know that greater is yes. he. Yes, hallelujah, God. Oh, yes, he yes, will. Yes, sir. He's good, God. In my clothes. Yes, Lord, help hallelujah, me today. God. God will God. lead you yes, sir. from darkness to light. Yes, sir. Because he's able. Yes, he is. Why is he able? Because Jesus hallelujah. hung high. Yes, sir. And was stretched wide. Yes, yes. And he died. Yes, sir. Yes, Didn't sir. he die? Oh, yes, sir. I know he died. Yes, sir. Yes, but yes, somebody sir. told me early. Early. Early on the third day morning yes, that Jesus the Christ got up Hallelujah. with all power. Yes, sir. And that power today will allow you to pray. Yes. And when you pray, uh -huh. believe mm -hmm. there's a great revival yes, sir. that's happening in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Lives are being changed. Mm -hmm. People are assessing and looking at their circumstances mm -hmm. and situation. No, none of us will be the same. Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. No, sir. But one thing I can tell you, God will always be the same. Yeah. He never changes. Yeah. He never slumbers. Yeah. He never sleeps. Yeah. He's always there. Yeah. And this is what I want you to know today. If you believe that, mm -hmm. I want you to come to Jesus yes. just yes. as you are. Mm -hmm. You can come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism, rest, however you want to come. Yeah. But as I offer this plea, I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I've heard the word. And I know, Jesus, that you died just for me. And on the third day, you got up out of the grave with all power in your hand. Power to answer my prayer. Power to meet me at my knees. To be my burden bearer. To be my way. But God, I accept your redemptive word. Therefore, today, I'm saved. I'm saved, I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. So my brothers and sisters, in my conclusion today, I want you to realize that on Thursday, May the 7th, has been proclaimed a national day of prayer. And I want all of us, if you can, find some place. There is no excuse. You're in shut down and you're in shut out. Amen. But I want you to take some time and pray and write your petition down and pray to God. And I guarantee you, during this time and season, God is going to answer your prayer. Now, I want the church family to know that we and all the viewing audience to know that we will be streaming live on Wednesday evening at 730 p.m. Amen. And we will have instructions to the church mm -hmm. about our further progress will be found on the Facebook page of the Elm Grove Baptist Church. And also you will be getting it through the messenger. Amen. And also if you drive by the church, you will be able to see information concerning the activities or whatever will be going on through the ministry. We thank God for everyone that has been looking, listening, and helping us preach. So in my conclusion, I say to God be the glory for the miracles that he's working. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne of majesty, power, and dominion. To the only true and wise God, the Father, the Son, and the precious Holy Ghost. And we all say amen. Amen and amen.